decide that. And what he decides is going to do for you, he will do for you, and nobody can stop him in Jesus' name. We're looking at Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. We're looking at it from verse 13. Job 23, verse 13. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desires, even that he doeth. What a lesson, what an understanding, what a revelation that God is of one mind. And once he says, this is what I'm going to accomplish, that's exactly what he accomplishes. And then he says, what his soul desires, even that he doeth. We're told in verse 14, for he performs the sin that is appointed for me. God has some appointment for you. I said God's appointment for you. And Job said, that which he appointed for me, he will perform it. He was just in chapter 23. He has not gone to chapter 42 yet. But he knew. He said, everything will be over. All this suffering will be over. All this, your sickness will be over. All this, your calamity will be over. All the loss that you have sustained, everything will be over. And the tears will be wiped away. Because there is an appointment, and not even Satan can hinder that thing that the Lord has appointed for me. He appointed that thing, the thing that's appointed for me. And many such things are with him. We're looking at Job chapter 9, reading from verse 4. Job chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and has prospered? When God says, let my son go, that they may serve me. Pharaoh said, who is that? I don't know that God. I will not let the children of Israel go. He hardened his heart. And he said, that thing God wants to do, I'm not going to allow him to do it. The promise he made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, that the children, their descendants will leave this land and they will go to their own land, the land playing with milk and honey. I am not going to allow it. He hardened himself against the almighty God. Look at that Job chapter 9 verse 4 again. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and has prospered. In the hardness of Pharaoh, did he prosper? The people who try to hinder your progress and they say no. They are going to be stronger than God. I feel sorry for them. I said I feel sorry for them. Because they have the same experience, destruction, devastation that um, Pharaoh had. Because what God has planned, nobody can harden himself against the Almighty God and never prosper. Why? Look at verse 5. Which removes the mountains and the no notch, which overturns them in his anger, which shakes the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun, and it triceth not, and sealeth the star, sealeth of the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh or Arcturus and Orion and Pleiades and the chambers of the south, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. That wonder will be in your life. And then it says in verse 12, it says, Behold, he taketh away, and who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest thou? Thou. We're looking at Psalm 37, Psalm 33, rather, Psalm 33. We're reading from verse 9, Psalm 33, verse 9. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and he stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. The Lord will bring all the counsel of your enemies to naught. The Lord bringeth all the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. All the devices of the magicians and the astrologers and the wicked people and the sorcerers and the witches against you, everything will be of no effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. The thoughts of his heart to how many generations? 
uh, as you listen to this, begin to think you're a child of God, you are born again, you have you, uh, kind of abandoned all your sin. You say, Jesus is my Savior. What's God thinking about me tonight? What's God planning for me tonight? What promises are, are, are the things in the mind of God for me tonight? What's in the mind of God? Where does He want me to be tomorrow? What does he want me to do tomorrow? What does he want me to accomplish in this single life? He loves me so much. He loves you so much. He's thinking about you. The thoughts of the Almighty God concerning you. Look at what it says in verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The counsel of the Lord concerning you will stand forever. The thoughts of his heart concerning you will be to all generations. Even though you might be down in the valley of the shadow of death, you are coming up to the mountain top of light in Jesus' name. That's what he has promised. Now, that's what's their purpose. That purpose is going to be fulfilled in your life. In Psalm 115, verse 3, Psalm 115, reading from verse 3, here it says, But our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he has done pleased he has done whatsoever he has pleased the pleasure of the lord will be affected in your life in psalm 135 verse 6 psalm 135 verse 6 whatsoever the lord pleased that did he in heaven and in earth and in the seas and all the deep places in proverbs chapter 21 verse 30 proverbs chapter 21 we're looking at verse 30, 21, 30 of the Proverbs. There is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord. After the Lord has decided something is going to do in your life, there is no committee that can meet in the forest, on the sea, in the shore, under the earth or in the sky that will negate and nullify and cancel that counsel of the Lord. Whatever God has purposed, that he will do. There is no wisdom, there is no understanding, there is no counsel against the Lord. We're told in Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 24, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely as I live, as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. And as I have purposed, so it shall stand. It shall watch stand. Verse 26. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. The purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. Anywhere you are in, in the world, you are a child of God. Whatever God has purposed, it will come to pass. In verse 27. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and you shall disannul it. And his hand is stretched out, and we shall turn it back. Nobody. I said nobody. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. When God wants to do a wonder in your life, it will be done. Nothing will hinder him. Isaiah 43, I'm reading from verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. God will work in your life. And who shall let it? Who shall hinder it? Nobody. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 46, verses 10 and 11, declaring the end from the beginning. And from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do, I will do, all my pleasure. Can the ravenous bird from calling the ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country? Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. Tell me the rest. I will also do it. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. If you are thinking thoughts of death, God is thinking thoughts of life. If you are thinking thoughts of poverty, God is thinking thoughts of prosperity. If you are thinking thoughts of suffering, God is thinking thoughts of gladness and happiness. 
He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not either, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth, and budge, and that it may be give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. The word of God will prosper in your life. Nothing will hinder the progress and nothing will hinder the promise of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord has a purpose for your life. Satan cannot hinder it. Babylon cannot hinder it. Enemies cannot hinder it. And Nebuchadnezzar realized, he said, don't touch Daniel, don't touch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are the children of the Most High God. All of us, all the rest of us, were reputed as nothing. Whatever God has purpose for them, God will do in fact for the whole generation, from generation to generation, and dominion to dominion, whatever God has purpose, even to this very day, it will be done in your life. Why don't you rise up and talk to the Lord? Now you see the immensity of God and the nothingness of man. You see the greatness of your God, the greatness of your heavenly Father. Trust in that heavenly Father. Believe in that heavenly Father. He's on your side. He'll take care of you. Pray to the Lord. If you're not born again yet, why don't you just call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I give myself to you. I surrender myself to you. You don't want to miss the privilege of being a child of such an heavenly father. You don't want to miss the privilege of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, turning away from all your sin and having Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So that God will be your father. And so that you'll make all things possible in your life. And you know that nothing can hinder him. Nothing can hinder him. He's such a mighty God. He's such a great God. Look at the personal testimony of Nebuchadnezzar. He published it. He publicized it to all people, to all nations, to all languages. What are you doing with your own testimony? Publicize it. Use all the means available Radio, television, internet, newspaper, printing press, literature, whatever. And send the message across all over the world of who God is, of the power of God, of the might of God, of the immensity of God. Send the message all over the people here. So the people come to put their trust in this mighty God. Use all the knowledge the Lord has given you to publicize the message. Use all the tools available to publicize the message. Use all the technology available to publicize the message. Nebuchadnezzar did, that's why you're reading about it today. Preserve the message. Publicize the message. Let everybody hear, let everybody know. So they can have confidence in this mighty God of heaven. They'll see the infinity of God. They understand the immensity of God. They understand the might of God. They will understand the greatness of God. They will understand the unchanging, unchangeable nature of this great, mighty God. Expand your thoughts about God. Lift up your heart to the God of heaven. Don't look at man as so great, so mighty, as if a man on earth, an enemy on earth, is greater than your God. See how great God is, how mighty God is, 
how powerful God is, the majesty of God, the glory of God, the power of God, see the faithfulness of God, and see the promises of God, and see that none can hinder him. When he speaks, it's done. When he promises, it's fulfilled. No hindrance against this mighty God. None can say unto him, What doest thou? No witch can hinder him. No sorcerer can hinder him. No, ba no Babylonian can hinder him. No Chaldean can hinder him. No Nebuchadnezzar can hinder him. The God of heaven, the most high God, powerful, mighty, great, doing wonders. And nobody can harden himself against God and prosper. Anybody that tries to compete with God in your life, threatening you. And saying he doesn't care which God you believe in, that is going to do this or that. That fellow is gambling with his life and with his eternity. Believe in God, trust in God, depend on God. Put all your faith, all your confidence, all your trust in this mighty God. Do you remember the promises he has given you? They'll be fulfilled. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. Nobody can push you down, make you fall. You will not fall, you cannot fail. When the almighty God is supporting you, surrounding you. You can trust in the Lord. And the Lord will see you through any challenge, any difficulty. Learn your lesson. Don't wait like Nebuchadnezzar to go into suffering, calamity, chastisement before you learn the lesson. Learn it now. I say lunch it without going through the terrible experience of Nebuchadnezzar David lunch that God is the most high God without going through that kind of calamity learn the lesson like those prophets and worthies of old learn it as you read it in the world accept it, believe it meditate upon it and let the lesson you learn be the support of your life is great beyond description is mighty without any contradiction. Remove your mind from men. Don't center your life on so-called enemies. Those are men. All the inhabitants of the earth, Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, Herod, enemies, Goliath, Philistines, Amalekites, Canaanites, Jebusites, every one of them, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing in the sight of the Lord. Don't fear any enemy, don't you have God, don't you believe in God? Stand on these promises that will never fail. Don't let anything shake your confidence in God. And don't say, if that man doesn't help me, I'm lost. If that man doesn't come to my aid, to my rescue, then what am I going to do in life? Remove your mind from man. Lift up your eyes to the hills. From whence cometh your help? My help cometh from the God of heaven. And he will sustain you and supply all your needs. Have faith in God. He never disappoints those who trust in Him. Man is insignificant, like a drop of a bucket. That the grain of sand, insignificant, inconsiderable.
God will feed you without their riches. God will support you without their support. If they want to give their support. Because my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Trust in him. Depend on him. Lean on him. Remove your mind from men. Your confidence from men. Your faith from men. Your trust from men. Trust in the Lord. Make him your confidence. He is the most high. Believe it forever and ever. He rules over all. His dominion, his kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. He doeth according to his own will. No Satan can hinder him. He doeth according to his own will. What's the will of God for your life? What's the plan of God for your life? What's the purpose of God for your life? He doeth according to his own will. No evil spirit can hinder him. No demons can hinder him. And if you trust in the Lord, no demon, no evil spirit can chase you out of town. He, the almighty God, doeth according to his own will. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, none can stop his hand, none can hinder the oppression of his mighty walking power. None can say unto him, What doest thou? Is the king of heaven and earth. All his works are truth. Remember, his word stands and stands forever. Our God is great. Whatever you are going through, the Lord will see you through. No man will be able to hinder you or hinder the plan and the purpose of God in your life. Let your God remain big in your heart. And let all men remain small. You will ride on the storm supply. Ride victoriously. Yours will be the victory and the success. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe.